Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. So today we have a really exciting project. I got an Apple II Plus off of Craigslist, and although it was in really good shape, it was actually really dirty. And when I cleaned it up, I found that it had a Videx Enhancer 2 keyboard encoder card inside of it. And my Apple II Plus, which I had growing up, didn't actually have one of these cards. And what it lets you do is actually generate lowercase characters on the Apple II Plus, which didn't normally have lowercase. The problem is, even with the keyboard encoder board, you still can't actually display the characters on the screen unless you're using something else like an 80 count card. So what I'm going to try and do is follow the instructions in the Videx Enhancer manual and actually convert this Apple II Plus to be able to display lowercase characters in regular 40 column mode. So let's get started. So the Videx Enhancer 2 was a add-on accessory for the Apple II and the Apple II Plus. And it came with two things. It came with a lowercase character generator ROM, which you could install in place of the original character generator. And this just contained the same ASCII character set, except in the upper 32 bytes, it had the lowercase alphabet characters. And then the other piece was an actual replacement for the keyboard encoder. And so this just went on the back of your keyboard and completely replaced the original Apple keyboard encoder. And it actually contains a 6504 processor, some onboard ROM, as well as a output nine pin connector to which you could attach an optional function strip, uh, which this one actually didn't come with. So what you need to do was just plug this into the main motherboard and this just fed both uppercase and lowercase characters to the Apple II using the shift key to switch between them. So let's try the Videx Enhancer 2 out of the box. So it boots up and you'll notice when we type we get uppercase characters. Now the way that the Videx Enhancer 2 worked is you could use a combination of different keys to switch modes. So for example if you hit shift reset then it would switch you into lowercase mode once you were in lowercase mode, you could hit the control key and it would switch you to caps lock until you hit the shift key. It also had a fast repeat, so if you held down one key and then clicked the repeat key, you can see that it actually speeds up and it does about 50 characters per second. And then you could also upload macros onto it, so you could store a whole bunch of different keyboard macros. And if you just hit one key, it would print out about 50 characters or something if you hit one key, it would print out up to 510 characters for one keystroke, or you could divide that up amongst as many macros as you needed. The problem is the way the auto start monitor is written in the Apple II Plus and the old monitor in the Apple II, anytime you try to type a lowercase character, it automatically converts it to uppercase. So you can see if we write a short program to actually display the characters, so if we do 4i equals 224 to 255 print chr string of i and then next and we run this you can see that with the character rom in there from videx you actually can get all of the lowercase characters the trouble is there's no way to actually type those on the keyboard and actually have it survive the auto start monitor so let's take a look now at the assembly code in the monitor and see what's going on. So just a quick note on some references for this video. You definitely want a copy of the Apple II reference manual because this contains a listing of the auto start and the old monitor ROM and you're going to have to refer to those to figure out what to change. I also found it helpful to have a copy of assembly lines. This has ASCII charts in the back as well as zero page locations. And it also explains how C out works and gives you some programs to try it out. And then finally, you need the Videx Enhancer 2 manual. I was able to find a copy of this online thanks to Paul Hagstrom who scanned it for me. And in particular, you wanna look at section A, 
E.1. And this actually talks about how to modify the auto start monitor to get lowercase. So I printed that out. And then finally, uh, what was probably most valuable was understanding the Apple II by Jim Sather. And again, I found a copy of this online and I was able to print out the relevant pages. In this case, it's chapter 8, section 30, where he talks about how to program new screen character sets. All right, so now let's take a look at the system monitor code. So if we look at address FD75, which is in the F800 ROM, we can see this is where the next character routine is. And this first starts out doing a jump to a subroutine called read character, RD char. And then it looks for a control U character, which would be the advance to the right. And if it doesn't see that, then it jumps to this routine called cap test. And this is the one that's causing us all the trouble right now. So basically what this does is it compares the key that was just entered with E0, which is 224. And if it doesn't find that character, it goes ahead and jumps down and it actually adds that character that was typed to the input buffer. That's what this store accumulator in zero page location in is. But if it actually finds a character that's above E0, then what it does is it actually takes that character and it ands it with DF. And this has the effect of actually just subtracting 32 from that value. Unfortunately, all of the lowercase characters are above 224. And so what this is doing is just taking any lowercase characters and just converting them directly to uppercase. So that's why every time you try to type a lowercase character using this enhancer 2, it just immediately gets converted to an uppercase. So we need to change this for sure. Now there's one other problem that we're gonna get into, and that's what happens when you actually do a left arrow to go back over a character. And that's actually what this read character routine does, and we'll take a look at that next. But the first thing we need to do is just go ahead and fix it so it doesn't convert lowercase to uppercase. And the easiest way to do that is just change, instead of DF, we're just gonna make this an AND with FF. And this will just have the effect of a no-op. And so this will just cause nothing to happen and it won't actually convert the lowercase to uppercase. So if we look in Jim Sather's Understand the Apple II, he has a really nice table of how the character generator ROM is laid out in memory. We can see that it's divided essentially into two regions. The first and upper part is normal characters. The lower part is actually the inverse and flashing characters. So if you look at the EEPROM address from 000 through 3FF, these are all either inverse or flashing. And any characters that are in there that have just a normal pattern will actually be inverted. And any characters that have their high bit set will actually be set to flashing. And then anything above 80 or higher will actually be just normal characters. And this is either the control characters, symbols, the uppercase alphabet, or the lowercase alphabet. So when the Apple II is actually trying to highlight a character, because say you've used the back arrow, what it does is it actually backs up and it sets that character to flashing. So if we actually want our lowercase characters to be able to be highlighted properly, we need to actually fit them in somewhere in the lower part of the ASCII. And the trouble is we have the alphabet here, which is uppercase, we have symbols, we have another up uppercase set for flashing characters, and then more symbols. So what I decided to do, which is a little bit different than what the manual, the Videx manual recommends, they actually just decide to if you highlight a character because you've backed over it and a lowercase character, they just set it to an uppercase inverse character. So they just make it into this range from zero to one F. Instead, I actually wanted it to look like a flashing lowercase character, just like any other character. So what I decided to do was essentially just replace the symbol range here in inverse. So from two zero to three F, and I just copied in 
the lowercase alphabet from E0 to FF down into 20 to 3F, and then I set the high bit on those characters so that they would turn out flashing when they were actually displayed on the screen if the cursor was over them. So let's look now at the code that actually does the character generation when you've written over a character and see how we can actually patch it in the monitor ROM. Okay, this is where it gets exciting. So you will recall earlier that when we were looking at the uppercase part, we had this jump to a subroutine called read character. And this is actually what handles the backspace when you actually go over a character. So if we look at this, the first thing it does is it actually does a jump to a subroutine called read key. The first thing it does is it loads the current horizontal cursor position into the Y register. And then it goes ahead and it loads the character that's actually at that screen address. So this is reading directly from text memory. And so it gets the character that the cursor is currently over, uh, stores it, pushes it into the accumulator. And then there's this funny and with 3F and then an or with 4-0. And what this is doing is this is actually shifting the entire character down into the inverse region. So if you recall, inverse was from 0 through 3F. So this just eliminates all of the high bits and shifts it all down. And then the or just turns on flashing mode. So if you type a letter A and then you hit backspace and go over the A, this just converts it into a flashing A. The trouble is, if we have our lowercase characters, then they're just going to get anded with 3F and ORD, and they're just going to turn out to be symbols. So this is not what we want. We actually want it so that when we backspace over a lowercase character, it actually displays the proper character. So what we need to do is actually, in the system monitor, we need to hack this to not do this for the case of lowercase characters. The trouble is we don't have any room here to do that because we've only got four bytes here that we can make use of. And it's impossible to do that with just four bytes of instructions. So instead, and this is following the recommendation of the Videx Enhancer 2 manual, we're going to actually eliminate these instructions here and we're gonna do a jump to a subroutine. Now the cool thing is, if you look at the auto star monitor, at FBB3, there's actually 14 no-op instructions in a row. And this was just instructions that got removed probably from the old monitor ROM and they just left the hole there. So we can actually use this and fill our instructions in there. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a jump to subroutine FBB3. And this is actually only three instructions. So then we'll just have to have a no-op here. So we'll just use a EA for the last part, just to fill in so we don't have a hole here. So that takes care of these four instructions. And then our subroutine at FBB3 now looks like this. So this is all new code, it's not in the auto start monitor, and this is just replacing all those no-ops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually compare our accumulator with E0, so that's just like this comparison we did over here. And then we're gonna, no matter what it is, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take an AND with 3F. And then, so that's just like this line here. So this will just eliminate all of the high bits and convert everything down to either the uppercase letters or the symbols. And then finally, we're gonna say, if we did have a lowercase letter, then we're just gonna to skip to the end and do a return from subroutine. But if we had an uppercase letter or a symbol, then we're gonna go ahead and do the same or with four zero, just like we did here. And so then we'll end up with flashing characters. So if you recall, we were actually gonna modify the character generator ROM so that the lowercase letters were gonna be from two zero to three F in place of the inverse symbols. So if we have a lowercase letter and we use the left arrow to go over it, then what'll happen is it'll map that into the range 20 to 3F, and that's already gonna have the flashing bit turned on in the character generator ROM, but if we have an uppercase letter or a symbol, then we'll go ahead, we'll map it down to inverse, and then we'll turn on the 40 bit to get it back up into the flashing mode. 
So the last thing we need to do now is actually take all these modifications to the monitor ROM and burn a new EE prom. And we'll talk about how we can do that and get it into the system. Okay, so we basically need to burn two EE proms. The first one is actually going to be our replacement for the lowercase character generator ROM that came with the Videx Enhancer 2 because we actually want to have not only lowercase but also put those lowercase characters into the symbols in the inverse so we can actually get the overwrite to work with the cursor. So we're going to go ahead and burn a 2716 EE prom and this is easy because this is just a straight drop in. This is actually the same pin configuration as a 2716 so that's easy. The hard one is the F8 monitor ROM. The problem there is this is not a direct drop-in for a 2716. In fact, the actual lines are slightly different, so one of them uses a, a high voltage on one line instead of a low voltage. So this is definitely not a drop-in for that. The good thing is the Videx Enhancer manual actually tells you an alternative. If you have a Apple language card, this actually comes with a replacement F8 ROM. So the good thing is Apple knew that it might be more difficult to find 9316 EEPROMs and what they did with the Apple language card was provide a way to switch from using a 9316 EEPROM to using a 2716 EEPROM. And to do that you just need to bridge one gap here and then cut through one trace and then you've actually converted the board to be able to accept a 2716. So let's go ahead now and we'll fire up the Mac and show how to burn those EE proms and then we'll install it and try it out. Okay so if you recall way back in episode 12 I showed how to build an EE prom programmer using a Arduino Pro Mini and we're going to go ahead and use that today to actually program these two EE proms. So what I did is I wrote a Python script to actually take in the character generator ROM and the F800 ROM, make the modifications that I needed, and dump those out into an Arduino header file that we can then use for our programmer. So basically the Python script just opens up the file, reads it in, and if it's the lowercase character generator file, then it goes ahead and it replaces the symbols from the ASCII range 20 to 3F with our lowercase symbols and then also turns on the high bit to make sure that they're flashing. If instead it's the F800 ROM, we go ahead and we put in our hacks that we talked about earlier. So for example, we put in our new subroutine at FBB3. We go ahead and we put in the jump to that subroutine in the read key routine. And then finally, one last thing we go ahead and change in the cap test we change the AND from the DF to the FF. And just as a little bonus, I also draw the characters for the character generator ROM just so we can see what they look like. So let's go ahead and we'll run this and we'll first do the character generator ROM. And so we'll go ahead and we'll just run our script. And when we do that, you can see here's our characters that come up. And you'll notice that in the upper part, so this is 8-0 and onward, we've got, these are the control characters here from A through Z and all the other ones. We've got the symbols, and then we've got the uppercase regular characters. Here's our lowercase symbols. And then down below 8-0, this is where we have inverse and flashing. So the first part here are our normal inverse uppercase characters. Then these are our new inverse flashing lowercase characters and then finally we have the flashing uppercase and the flashing symbols. So this all looks good so we'll go ahead and close this and you can see it actually wrote out the header file and now we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing for the F800 ROM and then I'll show you how to program those using the Arduino. So now that we've run the Python script and created the Arduino header file we'll go ahead and fire up Arduino and the programmer. So here's the programmer which I described in episode 12 
And here's our header file containing all of the ASCII values for our character generator ROM. And you can see there's 2,048 of them. So there they all are. And we'll go ahead and we'll upload this to the programmer. And you can see it's the lights blinking here showing that it's uploading. And then once it's successfully uploaded the program, we can bring up the serial monitor and it'll go ahead and ask us to make sure that the switch is in the down position so we know we're programming a 27C16 instead of a 28C64. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll hit return to start programming. And you can see it's printing out um, all the bytes as well as lighting up the LEDs indicating which address it's currently working on. And then once it's written them all out, it goes ahead and reads them back in just for a verification. And that's it. So we've programmed the lowercase chip. We'll do the same thing for the F8 ROM. And I won't go ahead and show that. It's essentially the same process. And we'll go ahead and put those into the Apple IIe and see if we can get the lowercase to work. Alright, so now we've got both of our EE prompts installed. So down in the lower portion, we have our special 2716 lowercase EE prom, and this is the one that is has the lowercase characters both in the upper range, E0 to FF, but it also has the lowercase down in 20 to 3F, and this has the inverse. Um, this is the inverse region, and it also has the flashing bit, the high bit set on, so that these will be flashing when the cursor backs over one of these characters. We've got the 2716 installed in the F8 ROM slot in the language card, and we've made sure to bridge the solder bridge here on the card and also cut through the, uh, the, the gap here on the card to make sure that it's set for a 2716. One more word of caution. So the Videx Enhancer 2 manual is long on verbiage, but it's actually pretty low on actual information. And they warn you to, if you make the modifications to the ROM to allow it to fit onto the motherboard, which you can certainly do, uh, they recommend that you attach a couple wires between a couple pins. And the trouble is they, they also say, if you do that modification, then you cannot use a RAM card. And the reason why is because the RAM card can actually pull one of the pins to low, which disables the onboard F8 ROM. And the trouble is with the modification as described in the Videx manual, this will actually short five volts to ground. So it's not an actual safe modification to make. There are ways to do it safely. You can actually attach a couple pins together, uh, disable a couple pins. You can use an inverter to switch from the five volts to the zero volts so that the 2716 is compatible with that socket. Uh, but that's pretty messy and it's much easier to just go ahead and use the slot on the 16K language card. So let's go ahead now and we'll fire it up. We'll turn this on. So we get a beep, which is good. And you can see that on the monitor, okay, it's displaying the Apple II, which is good. Now, if I just type normal characters, everything's working fine, and I can use the backspace and it all works. So let's now switch to lowercase mode. I hit control, shift, reset. Okay, so now I'm in lowercase, and you can see when I type, I'm getting lowercase letters. When I use the back arrow, it's now using the proper characters in my character generator ROM. So I'm getting, so for example, I'm over the F and I'm getting a blinking inverse F there. And so that all seems to be working. Now, of course, we have done some modifications to the character generator. So for example, if I, let's see, I'll switch to caps lock mode by hitting control and I'll go into inverse mode. So now I'm in inverse mode. And if I actually try to print out, say, the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, Okay, you can see now I'm actually getting QRSTU flashing instead of inverse one, two, three, four, five. And this is just a consequence of us not really having room in the character generator ROM to hold all of the characters we needed, including the flashing lowercase letters. So just real quick, we can actually go into the monitor and to do that, let's switch back to 
caps mode because it's not going to understand lowercase for any of these commands. And if we go to our new ROM routine, so let's look at FBB3 list. Okay, so there's our new code that we've added to the ROM chip. So there's our compare E0, the AND with the 3F, the branch and the carry set, the OR, and then finally the return from the subroutine. And we still have one, two, three, four, five no ops left in case we wanted to add something else to the F8 ROM. Overall, it seems like it worked okay, and it looks like it was a success. So now that I've got this working, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put this into my own Apple II Plus so I can have lowercase characters on my computer for the first time in 30 years. So thanks for watching.